Here in example six, we are having a product tree. Or in other words, you can say that in previous examples, we focused on one product or one component and didn't actually saw a complete product tree. But here we will see that. So given the following product tree, explode, offset, and determine the gross and net requirements. All lead times are one week. So this is a relatively simple example. All lead times are one week. And the quantities required are shown in parentheses. The master production schedule calls for 100 A's to be available in week five. There are 20 B's available and all other on hand balances are zero. So I hope you understand this product tree that we need two B's to make one A and we need one D and one E to make one B. And similarly, we need one C to make one A and two D's and one F to make one C. So this is a relatively simple example. So we need 100 A's to be available in week five, and we have 20 Bs available. This is what we are given. All lead times are one week. So again, this is a relatively simple example, but here we will see the child-parent relationship and we'll use actually the bill of material to make the calculations. So as there are no requirements in this case for the first four weeks, so we could say that the net requirements, so the net requirements for all weeks before a week four are zero. So all, in, all net requirements are zero. So in week five, we are having requirements of 100 and the lead time is one week. So plan order receipt will be 100 and plan order release will also be 100. So that is a simple case. Now we need two Bs to make one A. And as I mentioned that the gross requirement for the parent in this case A, this requirement of 100 comes from MPS and the gross requirement for the components in this case B, C, D, E and F comes from plant order release of its parent. So the parent of uh, B is A. So gross requirements of A will come uh, from planned order release of uh, A, the product A. So the gross requirements will be 100 into 2. So they will be 200. So we, we will have this inventory of 20 available till week 3. So the net requirements in week uh, four will turn out to be 200 minus 20. So that will be 180. Now the order policy we are assuming in this case, in this example, in all cases is lot for lot. In the next example, we will see fixed order quantity as well, but here we are having for the sake of simplicity, a policy of lot for lot. So the net requirement in week uh, four will be 180. So planned order receipt will be 180. So the lead time is one week. So order will be placed one week earlier. So that is straightforward as well. Now the C is the component of A as well. So its gross requirement will come from planned order release of A. So a requirement of 100 because one C is required to make one A. There is no inventory available. So there are no net requirements as well till we four and net requirements 100, plan order receipt of 100 and corresponding plan order release of 100 for component C as well. Now this component D is part of B as well as C. So this D is part of B as well as C. So first we will see how much requirement is coming from B. So that is a requirement of 180. 
So 180 in V3 and two Ds are required to make one C. So 100 into two. So that will be 200. So total requirement of 380. So there is no inventory available. So there are no net requirements as well. So we will have net requirements of 380 uh, in week three for component D and we are having a lot for lot policy. So planned order receipt will be 380 and corresponding planned order release will be 380 because in all cases, the lead time is one week. So here it is one week as well as was for C, B and A. Now this E is a component of B. So its requirement will come from B. So this 180 because one E is required to make one B. So we will have this 180. Here in week three. So no inventory is available, no net requirements except for week three. Lot for lot policy, so 180 will be plan order received as well as plan order release. And finally, this F is the component of uh, C as well. The so one F is required for one C, so we will have this 100. Here, so the gross requirement or the, of the component come from the plan or the release of its parent. And one F is required to make one C. So we will have net requirements of 100, plan order receipt of 100 and corresponding plan order release of 100 as well. So this was a simple example, but just to drive away the idea that how we can actually calculate the demand of the component and corresponding <clears throat> plan order release uh, once we are given <coughs> the product structure or bill of material. But still, if you have any questions, you can ask.